Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are live at the Why Wait Podcast, and this is your host Mugera alongside Coach Nana KK. In a minute, I'll be introducing this big, beautiful man from Africa. But first, this is Fight, Plight, Strike. This is a brand new episode of the Pod and Steak, an idea by Coach Nana. You already know, man. You already know what Coach you Lander, say. Man. Welcome to the podcast, man. Thank you for having me, bro. Man, it's a, it's a, it's a big, big pleasure. It's, it's, it's been a, it's been a while we're trying to do this, and uh, I'm very happy that we are here today. Yo, man, I'm telling you, man. The first time I, I heard you speak on the, on your Instagram reel, I'm yeah. like, damn, man, we need to make this podcast. <laughs> podcast have happened, bro. Yeah. So, so for those of you who might not know, we had a, we had a. a I, I made a video and then I was uh, speaking in the background and then Coach and I came and uh, talked to me about it and he said that that was good. One of the guys who actually talked to me about it, m- most of them never said a thing about it. So I think that's what makes you very different, Coach Nana. Of course, man. Yo, for me, it's all about pushing each other. I mean, for m- sure. Motivating my brother, especially with you being an African, you, you understand the, you understand the, the struggle, struggle and, yeah, and the, the, struggle, the yeah. hassle of being here. So... When I see somebody trying to make progress, I make sure I encourage the person. Okay? For sure, hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. Now, if you are if you are a new listener on this podcast, there is lots of so, uh, lots of episodes we've made in the past, and uh, this is a, a brand new episode, which is again uh, the pod and uh, uh, pod and steak podcast. Well, the steak will be coming in a minute, but we'll just talk about that later. Uh, but today. <laughs> is a uh, is a uh, plight fight strike now coach nana is someone who obviously has experience in all those three things that we just talked about so obviously plight is uh, is, uh, is 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 a, is 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 a is a living is a way people live and they live in uh, in uh, in impoverished poor uh, poor backgrounds yeah. or maybe they are under under stress from uh, societies, communities, but they're not living really well. And I know that for sure, Nana, you do not come from a, a very rich <coughs> no, background. No, no, no. Um, I, I didn't. Um, I, I think with me, um, it was tough growing up. I mean, my parents, they, they, they did their best. Um, they did their best and um, they did their best to raise me up. Uh, yeah. It was a tough one. Eventually, m- my mom became very okay. She, she had a big shop, everything, and then things got a little bit on a, a downside, a slide a little bit. You know what I mean, yeah, for a couple of years, and uh, there was a lot of struggle going on. And um, yeah, but <clears throat> life, life actually has been tough in in a, a lot of ways. How long? How long have you lived in Dubai? Five years now. Five years now. Uh, where are you from originally? Ghana, man. You're from Ghana. Ghana, man. So when I when I hear of Ghana, the only thing I, I know is Kumasi. No, Kumasi. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> interesting enough. So the is interesting enough. I, I'm an Ashanti. So Ashanti is our, our capital. Is uh, is the Ashanti region. So Kumasi is supposed to be like our, our main place. You know what I mean? Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. But, 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 so Accra is the capital. Accra is the capital of Ghana. But Kumasi, for, for me as an Ashanti, yeah. Kumasi is supposed to be where the real, uh, as in for the Ashanti, that's our capital. So Ashanti is, yeah. bro, so hold on a second, man. Ashanti, there is an artist called Ashanti, you know that? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I know that, man. Listen, so the tennis. Yeah. Growing up, I don't know. I I figured out she was. She, I, I thought she 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 might be related to the to Ghanaian or something. Yeah, for sure. It could be possible. You yeah, never know. Very. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the slave trade messed up a lot of stuff. <laughs> you never know, man. <laughs> it's possible, right? Very possible. You know so what? so Ashanti, when you googled it up, she was never connected in any way to the. You know what? The funny thing is, I've not even tried to to Google her name up, but I, I feel like. She could be. She could be. She could be. <laughs> she could have the, the blood So fair enough. If you, if if you're not a shanty, <laughs> then what could you be if you're Ghanaian? Well, we have a lot of tri- tribes in Ghana, and I think I I I, I wouldn't say <clears throat> I wouldn't say the main tribes. I, I would say the recognized tribes in Ghana are the Ashantis, 
the no sorry the i, I can't i can't uh, um all right let me try and break it down a little bit yeah right? yeah so the ashantis and the fantis we all speak the same kind of the same language yeah so we all what's the language tree tree T W W I T W I. So okay. we so, all we all put under one umbrella called Akan. Akan. Akan tribe. Okay. But within that Akan tribe, we have different tribes in, in there. Right. We we all called Akan. Right. Right. But they are among all, all of us Akans is the Ashanti tribe. That yeah. That's the, the the strongest one. Ashanti is the strongest of all. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let me just justify that. Where is Thomas Party from? Party probably. He's a guy. He, he, he's, he's from uh, the Ga tribe. So he's not Ashanti. He's not Ashanti, no. Bro, if he's not Ashanti, then Ashanti is not the strongest of all. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, if you check it out, I mean, the, from the Akan tribe, we have people like um, Michael Essien. Michael Essien. So, my nigga. Of course. Uh, very strong guy, no, bro. Because, you know, when you, you look at history, the Ashanti have a. Um, uh, a recognized where where where, where was um bro where was uh near well, no 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 this first president of uh, Ghana Kwame Nkrumah Kwame Nkrumah Kwame Nkrumah uh, is an uh, Akan he's an Akan he's an Akan but as in the whole Akan but he, he this part is from it's not Ashanti he is he, from a different part of Akan like, oh like yeah tribe part yeah oh yeah okay great so now now this is very serious now. That's Jackie cool. Appiah, Jackie Appiah, where is he from? Is he from Akan? Yeah. He's Akan, yeah? He's Akan. I'm going to date myself an Akan girl, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so Jackie, bro, bro. Jackie, just in case you hear this, yeah. this man has, I'm looking has for a, you, Jackie. I'm looking for you, he Jackie. He has a big crush on you, man. He has a big crush on you. So I, I'm telling him, man, you are, I mean, I, I wouldn't say you are all about the dollars, but... He, he needs to step up his game. Bro. Oh, yo, bro. I got some money, bro. <laughs> I got some <laughs> I got some money, bro. Jackie don't know about this. Bro, okay. Back back to business. So, uh, when you were growing up, tell me about a bit about your background back in Ghana. What you used to do growing up and how was life? Uh, was, it, was it a straight path? Was it struggle? And how you ended up here? So, don't go too far deep when you get it. But just tell me about growing up. Uh, so yo, um, growing up was a bit challenging, and it was it was fun at, at the same time because um, we we used to be in street fights growing up. You know what I mean, because I I used to fight for my my street. Dude, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, man. This 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 is very very bad, bro. We didn't introduce you. What you do? Come on, man. What you've done? Come on, man. Are you going to tell us what you do first before you tell us about All the right, street fight? So, <clears throat> we apologize, guys. We, we, oh, for we, sure. We, big apologies. Big apologies. Both of us got too caught up in the... Uh, yeah, uh, man. We're just too so excited, man. <laughs> <laughs> we're just too so, excited. So, so um, <clears throat> the turn is, um, my name is Michael Adum- Ad- Adomako. Um, or Michael Adum- Adomako. My a- a- African name is Nana Kwame. Mm-hmm. So, um, Coach Nana came about. I I decided to call myself Coach Nana because I feel like I like being represented with my a- African my name. My nigga, my nigga. That's what I keep telling her about, bro. That's it. Mugera. More, than my, more, Mugera. more than my English name, because for sure, because there's a lot of Michael in Dubai. I mean, there's hundred thousands of Michael. Yeah, bro. I've never met a Nana. Never. Come on, man. And I think that's what identifies you to be, you know, unique. That's it. I think I think we are we are robbed of our culture. Of course. And when we get these English, English names and stuff like that. Yeah. Yo, um, so don't no disrespect to the, the English culture, the British or or all those guys who yeah. who try yeah. to, yeah. to to capture us. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. They, they did capture us, but yeah, they did, man. They, they, a lot of us. I mean, Shh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, by the way, yeah. no, no, no disrespect to them. By tennis, <clears throat> it's been years and years of brainwashing us from our history and all that. But the reason why I, I, I don't really talk too much about history is when you focus too much on history and you don't have a vision for, for, for the future, you get stuck in the middle. When you focus, focus too, too much, much on, on history, history, what happened in the past, and you don't plan for the future, you get stuck in the middle. 
who are you start blaming people for what has happened? Yes. Not to you. Yes, word, word, word. Not to man. you, but to, to your great great grandfather. Because there's nothing you can do about the history, right? There's nothing you can do about it. We just gotta learn from it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just have to learn from what has happened in the past. That's Not it. to do the same mistakes in the That's future. That's it. But, but with, with that being said, it doesn't mean we shouldn't talk about it. No. It, it should be addressed. It should be addressed. It's supposed to remind us so we don't repeat the same mistakes again. 100%. So the history is important. 100%. But, but when you focus too much on it without seeing where, where you're going, then you miss the point. You know what I mean? So you get stuck in the middle. Stuck in the oh, that's a good line, bro. You that's a really, really, really good line. Yeah, so you were telling us, Coach Nana. Yeah, so, <clears throat> sorry, guys. Um, Co- uh, Coach Nana um, from Ghana. It runs really good, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Coach <laughs> Nana from Ghana. Coach Nana from Ghana, man. All right, so, so, okay, roll us back a few years ago before you got here. Uh, about your school days, about uh, your, your, your the, the works you did, what you street fights and stuff you did before you came to Dubai. Yeah. So and why you came to Dubai eventually? Yeah. So growing up was it was a tough one and um, very exciting. Uh, b- b- big big uh, big shout out to my parents. They, they 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 did great. My siblings, my friends, those who didn't like me. I mean, it's all part of the journey. By yeah, the way, for sure, for sure. growing up it was a tough one where. We we had to struggle a little bit. Sometimes I get into street fight for no reason, just cause I was representing my hood. Oh, really, bro? Just to go fight with the, ne- the guy in the next hood, oh, bro. Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. No kidding. And the street fight where we're doing it, it's like we we are, we are adults organized the street fight. What was my age by then? I think I was like twelve or something. Yeah, twelve or thirteen. So I was very good at street fight. So street fight. In this junction with the guy in the next place, yo, let's make it happen. So the adult, they set it up, we meet somewhere, and then we make it happen. <laughs> so, I mean, those kind of stuff. No, no, up. no, no, hold on a second. Man. What was the name of your village where you grew up? No, I mean, I actually grew up in Accra, the capital city. Accra, you grew up in the capital, bro. And yeah, everything you're talking about happened in the capital. But, see, Accra has the hood part of Accra. Right? Yeah, so, like, the, yeah, 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 yeah. So, Accra is the capital where the capital has, has everything. But then, I grew up in the hood. I mean, where the hood is like... Okay, so, in that hood, what's the name of that area? I really want to be very particular. Um, I think it's called um, Agege. 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 We moved around a little. So, yeah. So, let, let, let's say Old Dalsuman. Older Suman. Older Suman, yeah. Older Suman is the area, is the hood That's where hood. everything is happening. So, you are part of a group, and this group does not really fancy the other group. They have uh, problems between them. Yo, but see, it's not really about groups. It's like we're all in the same ne- neighborhood. But, but then, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm on like block A, and this guy is on block B. So the adults come together, yeah, like, yo, what you say? You you don't fight you don't fight the guy in block B? I'm like, yo, let, let's make it happen. My nigga, my nigga, are you telling me that just because the other guy lives in block B, there's gonna be a fight? No, no. This fight was it was it based on beef? Was no, it no. It was different. Perhaps some beef may happen while you play football and stuff. But sometimes the fight is more about you know when people there's a lot of debates. Yo, I think this guy can fight with this guy. No, and then so there is a debate. A debate. There is, can Nana beat the other guy? Can the other guy beat Nana? And then you're yeah, like, so one time I remember my sister was in the, she was in the the, the the balcony, right? Okay. She was cooking or something with my brother. And then one time, this this adults called me from the window like, yo, let's go, man. So I put my shorts on, <clears throat> and I and I just opened the door, walked straight to the street. And then we made it happen. What, bro? You're you're, you're not you you were not prepared for the fight, but it was going to happen anyway. Are you? Is this what you're saying? I, I don't know how how to explain this, but did they just I, set you up? No, I don't explain. But the other guy was already there, and I knew the other guy would be there. But I, I, I didn't know the exact time he'd be there. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, so when they got, bro, sorry, you are so bush. They are bush you, bro. Tell him. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Man, my voice is a bit off, though. <laughs> so, so when they 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 they, they, they called me from the window, you're like, "Yo, what you saying?" I'm like, "Yo, let's do it." 
They put my shorts on. I went straight to the street. I'm a fucking man. Dude. What the fuck is all these man? So okay, yeah, go on. Yo, go so, on. Sorry, guys. So, so this one is just by the way. Anyway, so there's been a couple of street fighter stuff. We lost some. We won a, 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 lot, of, yeah. a, a lot of them. But eventually, <clears throat> all, all these guys became friends, close friends and stuff. And uh, the thing is, what 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 was your biggest fight? Uh, if you can recall, as a child growing up, fourteen, fifteen, and uh, when when was the last time you ever fought a street fight? So you just gotta go into this. When was the last time you had a street fight? What was the biggest fight you had then? And uh, what was your biggest win? What I believe your biggest fight was your biggest win. Could be the biggest loss. What was your biggest win? What was your biggest loss? Um, with respect to to street fight, um, I, I, I have not actually lost in a street fight. No shit, bro. No, no, but I have not lost. But I, was, I, I fought because when, when I was around like twelve years old, I was fighting with sixteen, eighteen guys. I mean, yeah. So perhaps those guys were trying to hustle me a little bit, bro. bro but they were they were they're bigger than me. They're bigger than you. Yeah, but those when I was a kid, I I I, I, I don't know, man. I, I used to be in a lot of watching martial movies and stuff so I, I i used to be throwing some kicks and stuff you know? yeah, yeah, yeah so uh, even though they were bigger than me they were a little bit scared of me you know? i mean in, in, in a way yeah, yeah, yeah. so <clears throat> yeah so back to your question um street fight wise as in losing to a street fight not really happening so what what, what I, I normally do is i i examine who i'm going to fight with if i feel what I'm going to fight, I cannot do it. Yeah, I pull back. Really, bro? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna pull back. Like, oh, I'm sorry. No, no. I, I, I just find a way to find a solution to it. If you feel me, man. Uh, what do you mean by that? Asin, if let's say something happens and we fight over something about football, or something and well, the one guy throws a punch and I dodge and I punch him back and I realize he has a lot of crowd behind him mm-hmm. i just thought yo come down let's find a solution to this it's all making it a big mess yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. okay so so you you solve the problem man to man rather than uh getting into a fight that you know might be yeah a bit more <clears throat> i mean so back then solving that problem was the last option yeah but fighting was the first one the first one you have to be aggressive you fighting to, yeah. the first one Talking about the second one, oh, fucking hell, man. find a solution to it. The third one. I've, I've, as, 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 as that changed, as have, have things changed over time? Do you think that now you talk before you fight or you fight? No, no, no. I mean, I, I think growing up, uh, I got into. Sorry, um, I'm also an ex kickboxer. I did a lot of martial arts growing up, um, taekwondo, a little bit of karate here and there. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. So. I did keep boxing, a little bit of boxing. Muay Thai, I lived in Thailand cl- close to eight, ten months. Yeah. So, with all this the discipline that I, I learned along the way to now, um, mm. it, 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 it kind of prevented me from acting crazy sometimes. Wow. I mean, wow. It disciplines you. Now, now, that's one That's one of the, the beautiful things about martial arts. It, um, it actually disciplines you because... Normally in a real fight, you know you, you can uh, you can uh, you can uh, you can uh, you can just kill someone. Yeah, for real, man. Because when I stand with someone who is not a skilled fighter, I can kill him yeah. if I want to. I can punch him in the throat or something. Just one punch. Punch him in the throat, or I kick him in the ball and throw him off the balcony or something. Shit, man. Yeah, I mean it, it gets scary when you fight with a skilled a skilled fighter, but the martial discipline us. And the funny the funny thing is, since I started doing martial arts. I've hardly been in street fights. Yeah, I I I, I find a solution to it before the fight comes out. So you, when when did you start doing martial arts? Um, I think I started doing it. Um, <clears throat> what maybe um, fourteen, fifteen years ago. Fourteen, fifteen years ago. Yeah, that that, that was when I started doing it. As a kid, hey, dude, dude, man, you say 14, 15 years ago, you make, you, you make it look like you're too old, man, and you look young, man. I try, man. I try. <laughs> <laughs> so, 15 years of experience. So, when you did martial arts, you said you mentioned why we were, I was while well, we're talking now that you've lived in Thailand for eight months, is it? Eight months, so eight to ten months, I remember correctly, yeah. eight to ten months. So, uh, 
was that the time you started learning martial arts or it was way before that in Ghana? No, no, no. Way before that. Um, way before that. Because uh, growing up, we, we, we had a lot of... So my hood had a lot of, of, of gangs around there. Right. Where we kind of looked up to them and we learned from them. Mm. So we, we learned the street fight from them. We learned the martial arts from them. So wow. growing up, we, we learned the things as we grew up. Eventually, I got into Taekwondo. I I I got a red belt in Taekwondo. I, I competed in national competition uh, competitions. Um, I, I did a little bit of boxing, and I got into more more kickboxing, and then the Muay Thai and then MMA. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I I I was one of the the the, the pioneers of uh, MMA in Ghana. Really, bro? Yeah, we, we, we started the whole MMA event in Ghana. A serious, man. So where do you think MMA is right now in Ghana without you guys? Um, I, 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 I think it, it, it's growing. It, it's evolving. There's a lot of sponsors coming in and stuff. Now it's more recognized in Ghana because Ghana, we, we are not known for MMA. We are known for more of boxing and kickboxing, but more for boxing. Oh, really, bro? I haven't heard of any Ghanaian boxers, man. Come on, man. We got a lot of boxers out Bro. there. <laughs> Come on, man. We, 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 got it. we got the legend, Azuma Nelson. Much respect to him. Azuma Nelson is in the Boxing Hall of Fame. We have uh, Joshua Kroto. We have Agbeko. We have... Um, DK Poison, who was a world champion, Akbeko world champion, Joshua Kroto. Uh, man, pardon my, no, man, pardon no, my no. ignorance, man. I'm, I'm so ignorant about who are these guys? No, God. Joshua Kroto, he fought with 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 with, with, uh, with Manny, Manny Parker. You got, and we have I, I Kroto, who fought with uh, Oscar De La Hoya. For real, bro? Come on, man. This guy's a fighter on world stage? Yeah, world, world, world stage, man. Ghana is a country known for boxing. Oh, that's nice. Absolutely yeah, like, nice, but, but, but we, we actually have a whole neighborhood, bro. Ghana is we known. have a whole neighborhood. Ghana is uh, Ghana is known for every, more. Everybody knows how to box, bro. Ghana is known for beautiful girls and football, bro. Not boxing, bro. Oh, yes. Well, after that, that's what we think. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. The, 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 the fortunate, unfortunate thing about it is boxing is just on one side of it. It just like if, if this if this guy map is. If I could just draw the gamma, the gamma map, yeah. the boxing is just like... Oh, it's in a certain area. People, area box or, come from a certain or, area. Or, or, yeah. Mm-hmm. And the perception is... The, per, the per, perception is... If you're a boxer, then probably you're a school dropper. Oh, so yeah, you didn't have... You didn't get good education or something like yeah, that. Yeah, because the guys from the hood are the guys who, who are doing the boxing. But bro, is is that right though? Is, 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 isn't is it right? Because I believe it could be right. Because... Mm-hmm. Most times, most times when uh, you're growing up as a child, your parents think you need to go to school. But if they cannot afford, they cannot afford school, then you find other means of earning a living. Mm. And uh, most cases, when you can't earn a living as a young child, sometimes you might end up in violence. Mm. And then probably out of violence, you start learning that you have, you have skills. Mm. And those skills, you start mm. applying them mm. professionally, mm. which could mm. be MMA or boxing, to maybe earn a living from that. Mm-hmm. I, I think that makes sense. Is, is, that, is that the case? What do you think? No, it, it does make sense. But see, it makes sense a lot mostly in Europe or America or somewhere outside Africa. Perhaps in South Africa or something. Because the, the thing about Africa is we lack s- s- sponsorship. They see the boxing as um, a school dropout kind of thing. It doesn't mean the boxing the, the, uh, there's no money in it, but they feel like <clears throat> they don't address it as much as they they need to. It brings a lot of uh, recognition to Ghana, but they don't address it as much as it, it needs to. It yeah. brings a lot of recognition to Ghana. The boxing, yeah. yeah okay, does. fair enough. Now, uh, when did you move to Thailand? Yeah, so um, uh, I think I moved to Thailand in the I think it's uh, two twenty. 14 or something 2014 yes i believe so 2014 yeah so it's pretty much uh close to eight years ago or something right so was it was it uh, yeah. i think eight eight years yes eight years is yeah. it? My, my mathematics is not great bro but yeah so it yeah, sounds eight like years. eight years yeah, ago yeah, so yeah. so it was it was ghana thailand dubai no no so the, the move was 
we were fighting uh, in Ghana. I, I was part of the national team. I was privileged to part of the national team. So wow. In Ghana. A right? team for? The Ghana kickboxing team. Wow. Bro, that, I, that I is... I was part of the national team. That is great, man. That is great. Thank you. Thank you, bro. So, we were actually choosing a colleague of mine who's also here as a trainer. It's called... Um, something he's also here as a trainer he's also um, a coach here yeah so we were selected among some of our our peers and uh we were supposed to go to thailand to represent gagana in the fight mm. so we went there he went before i did i think two weeks later i i joined him so we went there so long story short we went there the go fight and come back event ended up being a 10 month stay what how? How? How is that even possible? Well, of course, um, we got there and we realized we, we we were actually good. We knew how to fight. We can actually, excuse my word, we can. Dude, you serious? Because uh, I always thought that uh, Thai guys are really good no, no, at no, fighting. No, no, the, the, the Thai guys are uh, amazing. They're really good. But don't get me wrong. They, they are the real pioneers of kickboxing and Muay Thai and all that. But we realized we 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 we're from the hood. You know what I mean, so the the, the blood runs to to us. Yeah. So I mean, you black and black. I mean, when I'm in the ring and our boxing too came as a big advantage for us. Yeah, yeah. Their boxing is not that great, so our boxing came as a bigger ad- advantage for These us. These guys are lighter. They are They're lighter. They are lighter. They, they kick are quick. really good. Are they quick or quicker? Very quick. Yes. Very quick. So like my my first fight. Sorry guys. So like my my first fight. A guy kicked me and I'm like, what the fuck? Bro. <laughs> Bro. The what, guy what kicked me here? in my in my So you know when you're fighting, right? Your guard is up, you like this, right? So the guy kicked me on, on my my hand, right? Yeah, there. yeah, yeah, yeah. The first thought that came to my I'm like, what the fuck did I just get myself into man? And he kicked me again. <laughs> Before you could process. The first kick, you already received another one. Bro, and I'm like, I'm like, guys, I just have to use this word. I'm like, fuck it, let's go all out. And I started punching, bam, 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 because the boxing, <laughs> we, did, we did more and more boxing. So, yeah. we're so we actually good at boxing. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. Bam, 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 yeah. bam, and the next minute, this guy's down. Yeah, and I'm like, what the fuck is happening? I just knocked someone out. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is the guy who was kicking you yeah, earlier. Yeah, then he's down now. I, I just knocked someone out. That's my first fight in Thailand. Yeah, and I'm like, whoa. So my my colleague Samson went before before me, and he fought on the same night for, uh, as me, right? So he won his first his, his first fight, and I won my second one, and we were like. This is actually happening. This is actually happening. This is actually happening. We could actually. We are good at this. We are good at this. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, to not make that story a little bit boring, at the long run, we had a, a title shot, a world title shot. Wow. We got that good where we had a world title shot. How, how long is this? Like one month or two months before you guys get a title shot? It took us, I, I believe it took us. Um, three to four months to get a title shot because between that three to four months we were fighting almost every two weeks who's taking care of your bills and everything while you guys um are so much respect to one of my my big brothers um i'll call him a big brother because he, 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 he gave me a different perspective a, a bigger perspective of how we could actually make money off the kickboxing and, and, and not just assume that it's just a, a training routine. You know what I mean? Lawrence, it's called Lawrence. Um, Lawrence, uh, I believe he, he he's a coach in Australia. Yeah. Yeah. He he sponsored the, the flight. He paid for our, our ticket and uh, our, our food and money and everything. So mm. we got there and then from there we started to hustle for our own thing. So. Wow. Bro, yeah. bro, are you telling me they dropped you in Thailand, and that's it. With maybe a few bucks on you, or maybe not even no money, and you started hustling without anyone you knew in Thailand. How many were you guys too? You and your friend. So my friend went, went with uh, a coach from Ghana, but the coach left him a week before, a couple of days before I, I got there. He left him and came back to Ghana. So I, that, I think that was my first time traveling. I went to Ghana. Oh man, 
or I went to Thailand on my own. Damn, bro. That's crazy, man. Bro. It's crazy. So, what was the experience like? You learned in Thailand. No, I, How old are you at the time? How old was I, man? Thailand, I, I, I That's think That's like was, uh, eight years ago. Yeah, eight years. I think I was in my, my 25 or something, man. Bro, so you land in Thailand, 25 year old. You have nowhere to go. I have nowhere. My first time traveling, and I didn't know no one, and I I, I was even lost in the airport. I I saw t- so many stuff t- to look at. I know, right? New oh, stuff, yeah. Okay, <laughs> yeah man. It's crazy, and coming. I got lost. I, I I even got lost in the airport. Eventually, this coach, the the, the coach we were staying with, the, the Thailand coach, yeah, he came to pick me up. So man, <clears throat> so man, like. The journey in Thailand has been has been beautiful, man. It's, Thailand is the country where the people are loving. I mean, they, they are a little bit too much sometimes. Uh, but what, what do you mean by too much? I mean, they 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 they, 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 they she male like yeah. you see a female you, you want to talk to her, and then the female has <laughs> the, the female has a mountain. I mean. <laughs> A few more as a month and, and then you are like, <laughs> "Man, nigga, what the hell is going on?" No, Bro, but, but but I would think since you've lived in Thailand for a long time, you should be used to that, man. You should know that that's gonna no, happen. No, no, no. The, the 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 makeup they do and the plastic surgery they do. If you think Dubai has plastic surgery going on here, Thailand is way way worse. Bro, are you telling me that there is more people like that than actual normal people? Like, no, no. There know? are normal people. There are women out there. Yeah. Which you're gonna see them, but you cannot. You need to make sure you watch them close to see that this guy, this girl, is a man. Because sometimes some people they can't afford to do the expensive surgery. Uh, uh, okay, okay. So just put makeup. So you <laughs> see from their, 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 their cheekbones. Uh, here's a funny one, bro. Uh, you've lived in uh, such an environment. Mm. Would you go to um, a washroom and uh, when you're there in a washroom, <clears throat> all of a sudden someone who looks like a woman comes through the male washroom because he's male? Is it possible? Um, it has never happened to me, but I'm sure if it did happen, I, 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 I'll, kick, I'll kick the guy. <laughs> but um, in Thailand, <laughs> everything is possible in Thailand. Everything is possible in Thailand. Thailand whatever happens in Thailand stays in Thailand. Thailand. Whatever happens in Thailand. Thailand is a beautiful country. Thailand is just, it's just like, a world on its own. I know, man. I know, man. Just, People yeah. are having fun down there in Thailand. Yeah. Oh, Thailand! When I went there, it was it was bro, it was cheap as hell, I, 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 and the place is cheap, and the 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 the, the, the rules kind of it favors everyone though, but the system in Thailand has been made in a way that the people there can better than benefit. People have um, um a, a couple of um um how should I say this? um incentives from the government where they, they, they can get new phones and better houses and are you stuff. serious man i'm telling you bro wow but then some people don't live in those houses they rent it out to the foreigners to get money because that's how they get their money i see so they they, they, are, they have a big house a, a villa but they are living a small one bro what about this uh what is it called um i think there's a popular place called Phuket. is it Phuket? Phuket. oh Phuket, my yeah? word bro bro the memories in Phuket, okay. man Yo, if, if anyone has, has been to Thailand and you've been to Phuket, then then they know. You already know, man. They already know. <laughs> you already know. They already Phuket, know, bro. Phuket, and there's one called Koh Samui or something. Chichamai, Pattaya. Yeah. I don't know, man. A deep, deep, deep shit, bro. I mean. Things that happen in Thailand stays in Thailand. <laughs> there you go, man. Thailand, okay, man. so Thailand happens. Where do you go back? You go back to Ghana? Yes. So the move was to Thailand got really exciting. And uh, I, I, I think that's where my coaching actually took off. Because the coach there, <clears throat> um, he said, yo, stay stay with me for a while. I'll, I'll make you guys fight a lot. So we we're fighting for him and he was paying us some good money. Right. And um, we started to train clients. So the experts come in, and then he, we were helping him to train the clients. Mm-hmm. And he, he realized we were actually good, so he was teaching us the right way to train the clients. Okay. So I, 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 I if I, if I, 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 I remember correctly, he 
actually taught us how to train clients in 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 the right way. Muay Thai, Muay Thai in the right mm, way. Yeah, mm, so mm, mm. we learned a lot from him, and um, yeah. Okay, so so then you go to Ghana. So the move was, so the, there was a, a UK fight that came up, and they were like, "Yo, guys, come back to Ghana," because we learned a lot of new stuff. When we came back, we were able to compete with the top level with our, our seniors, the top level guys in Ghana. Wow, that's good. Because we were like, like, you know, you know, when what is what is Japanese cartoon thing or, or name of it? Cartoon. Yeah, a, 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 a Japan an emotion uh, Dragon Ball Z Dragon Ball Z yeah you, uh, 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 have you watched it no bro so there's a lot of uh, Japanese cartoons yeah, right so Dragon Ball Z is like when you you, you get charged up and stuff you know what I mean yeah so we came back charged up we, we, we looked even like like the ties you know what I mean bro so because you guys were training and eating well and training every single day every day Morning, evening, two to three hours every day. Are you serious, man? Morning, two hours, evening, three hours. You have to change, man. Every single bro. That was the time I, I was the most fittest guy ever, man. For like eight to ten months, every single day. I'm yeah. telling you, man. Yeah. We, we were drinking our beers and stuff. We, Tatala is like that. Like we train, we drink, train, drink. But you don't go like, oh, coach, I'm tired. No, you don't do that. You got, you have to, you have to put in you, the work. You, you got to get up and go for a run. You so have to put in the work. Thailand, it was like that. So anyway, long so story you, yeah, short, you go back to Ghana. You have to f- compete in the UK. In the UK, we go back to Ghana, and then uh, there's a couple of delays with the, 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 the documentation and stuff. So I got stuck in Ghana, which wasn't such a great idea for me at, at that moment. And then uh, I, I, I joined the team back, the Ghana team back, to train. Yeah, uh, as a fighter, um, I had the opportunity to travel to to Cameroon. I was selected as one of the best fighters from Ghana to travel to Cameroon for an event. So it was Cameroon versus Africa. So I actually rep- represented Ghana in that event. Okay, okay, which was a good one. So um, after that event, a couple of traveling around here and the other countries and stuff in Africa and then um yeah so how do you move from there to end up to Dubai how does yeah, so Dubai, Dubai um we have a, a team here in Dubai one of my seniors a couple of my seniors they've been here for like 10 15 years now yeah so they message a colleague of mine who's also an ex fighter he's called um so champ, he may say champ and yo, a guy wants to build a gym in Dubai. Are you interested to come? So champ I, I, at that time was married and he said, no, you know what? Let me get in touch with me. So in touch with me as, as in. So my fight name is, is that Tago. That's my fight name. Tago. Tago means the, the, the strong man. He said, let me get in touch with Tago. So we, we are able to. So we link him up to come right 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 and it was a long story short the time they, they came to t- inform me about it i was all set to come but then i had b- bigger stuff going on I, I was training some of the b- big men in ghana making lots of money i'm like why 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 would i want to go to desert and just yeah, yeah, yeah. start all, all over again you know what I mean? yeah, yeah, so yeah. i made a, a colleague we recommended a colleague to come and, I, and then the following year I, i'm like you know what it's time to move, move out of Ghana again. Try something new, yeah. So uh, I gave my client over. The the guy, the gym guy, got in touch w- with me again, and then uh, it's been five years now. Bro, so yeah, go back a little bit, by five years ago. Yeah. Um, when you land in Dubai, what happens? Where do you go? Uh, how do you uh, go about your business? Mm. And uh, how do you find the place? And uh, how you managed to mm. get where you are right now? So when I, I I landed in Dubai, um, my gym was actually in Fujera. I, I don't know whether I know you've been to Fujera. Right? I've been to Fujera, man. Yeah. So my gym was actually in Fujera. A uh, big, very big uh, shout out to Ahmed, the gym owner. Thank you very much, bro. Uh, I always say, man, we've had our differences, but yo, you, you know me, man. I, I keep it hundred percent. If it wasn't you, probably I wouldn't be here. So th- thank you very much. And um, the gym is called. 
Cage Fitness. Amazing gym, man. Cage. Cage Fitness. Wow. Amazing gym. So he put me out there, and when I got here, the class and the, the quality of workout I did, the people, they were all blown away. Wow. Bro, they were blown away. I, I So I, I nailed it completely. And from there, Fujera, a year later, I started doing personal training in Dubai. So I, I, I was picking, I think a couple of months later, maybe six, seven months later, I, I started doing personal training in Dubai. I was picking the bus from Fujera to Dubai. Brother, 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 hold on a second, man. So, 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 you are working in uh, Fujera at a gym called Cage Fitness. Mm. And you started getting clients in Dubai. Yeah. In Dubai, mm. why Dubai? Did you want? Did you want to move to Dubai? Did you well, the the initial plan was not to move to Dubai because I I, I love the view of Dubai, but I saw Dubai to be. My mind wasn't ready for Dubai because I saw it to be a place where, if you're not mentally strong or stable, right, you're gonna get lost in in, in the the f- fun part of it word bro that's you word that's serious so man yeah serious. I, I have to stay in fujera a little bit get my mind prepared a lot before i, I move here so you took the bus mm. from fujera to dubai mm. to coach a client and go back yeah in time to, for my class in fujera what time was the client? Uh, I, I need to get this right. So, what time were you training the client in Dubai? So, this is uh, this is actually a very interesting story. Um, yeah, yeah. A lot of people wouldn't believe me if, if I say this, but hey, this is my story. So, this cl- client of mine, Roy, Roy, Roy and Alex, they were paying me two fifty dirham. Okay. So that, that was my first time getting two fifty dirham. I'm like, wait, what? Pas- like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Wait, that's a lot of money. Yeah, I know, right? You know, <laughs> yeah, come. My first time it was in the in Blue Waters. That was the first time I go to Blue Waters. So I, I picked a taxi because I, I I didn't know where I was going from Fujera to Blue Waters. I'm like, okay, I'm here. Well, the taxi is like three hundred dirhams, man. That time was like maybe five years or maybe one fifty or something. right? Okay. So I I'm like yo, I'm here. What you guys saying? I paid for a taxi. I'm good. Show me around. This is the gym and everything. So I liked it. So I figured out how to get my way. How to find a way? How to, how, how to find a way to Blue Waters? No, no, Blue Waters was not there five years ago. Was it was it? under construction. No, bro. Blue Waters. Yeah. No, it. No, no. Wait, wait. It could Blue be. Waters. I might be wrong, bro. I might no, be wrong. Wait, 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 wait. It could be. Could have been there, but this uh, Dubai Eye was just recently opened. But no, no, the Eye was open like two years ago. Yeah. Blue Waters was there. Okay, so blue waters. Blue waters like, you, you, yo, so like I said, ten within a few months I started with the blue waters. So I think maybe in the f- first year or maybe the second year, but blue was there. Because okay. it was already so open. Four years ago, yeah, yeah. Caesar's yeah. Palace was yeah, there and yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, you might be right. Probably not. So hmm. so you came from Fujera. How long does it take? How's the bus ride? How long is the bus ride? The crazy the crazy thing about Fujera is um it takes like um two hours to get to Dubai. The that's bus right. ride. Yeah, that's right. So the, I have a class at 8 in the morning, 7.38. So I, I wake up at 4 a.m. sometimes, okay? And uh, I, I, um, I pick the bus. I, caught, I took a picture of the time of the bus, right? So I, I pick the bus. A, a lot of people don't know this, though. I picked the bus from where I, I was in Fujera all the way to Rashidia. That's how kind of, I figured out all this train movement out. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy, man. All the way to Rashidia. And then... You take the train. I take the train to um, DMCC. DMCC Marina. Get down Marina. Take, take a taxi. Take the, take the taxi. If I'm running late, almost all I do is I take the tram to the uh, JBR two. JBR two. Yeah, I JBR two. Yeah. Top of the thing. Okay. Yeah, that walk is like uh, what 10, 15 minutes. Two two blue waters. Bro, so two hours in the bus. One hour for sure mm. in the train. Mm. Twenty minutes stops with the uh, with the mm. with the with the walk mm. plus the tram too. Mm. So you put like another 10, 15 minutes mm. for the changing mm. and the stuff. Bro, we're looking at a good solid three hours of travel. Yeah, this is back 
and forth because yeah. you have to go <clears throat> to and back mm. six hours six hours sometimes the funny thing is if it was beyond my my control sometimes because the bus delays a lot sometimes they're gonna stop here somebody is doing some weird stuff for the bus bro you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know i mean it happens sometimes. you know the bus is man these guys are crazy so <laughs> so the funny thing about the, the yeah, yeah 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 I got it. You got it. <laughs> we're like weird stuff. What do you mean by weird stuff, bro? I mean, people just act weird. People are like, "Oh, I, 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 I just want to stop here." <laughs> what, what, why the hell you want to? Why would you want to stop in the desert, bro? <laughs> I don't yeah, get it, man. <laughs> what else? <laughs> You're telling me we're in a bus. We're moving from Fajero. We're going to Dubai, and right in the middle, maybe after like 90 kilometers or something, this guy says. I want to stop here. I want to get out of the bus. That's it. And then, <laughs> and then you know, <laughs> and a couple of people are fighting. And why are you getting down here? I'm like, yo, allow, allow this motherfucker to just get out so we get out. <laughs> so, bro, the fucked up thing about the story is this, uh, man. Yeah, I tell on, people, man. the fucked up number of stories, it was sometimes the bus, I also need the timing for the bus here uh, in the Union, right? Yeah. Because that's where I picked the Fujira, the Fujira bus back. Yeah. The reason why I, I get down Rashidia, because when the bus goes to Union, the train from Rashidia to Union is already full. The train from Rashidia to, to Union, Union is already full, because that's where the train starts. Bro, 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 bro. Okay. Yeah, from Rashidia to Union. It, 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 yes. It's already yes. full. So I get down Rashidia when I'm coming from Fujira with, with the bus. Or what I do is um, I so when i'm coming back i get out from union that's where the bus station is yes you yes feel me? and yes. i pick the bus back to Fujira. yes then the crazy thing is i was doing this for over two years without a car bro okay what over two years without a car you only had this one client i had one he had one one he had one guy to it i think after a year or something i was doing this without one client for, let's say close to a year and I was getting only 50 dirhams. And sometimes less than that because I, I got to eat. And I, I need to have extra on me just in case I'm running late and I pick a taxi for me. Sometimes I, I come back and I have like 20 to 10 dirhams. Because I need to, my class in Fujira starts at, I, I meant forgive me, man. You, 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 you didn't know about this side of the house. You thought I was home sleeping, but <laughs> I was in Dubai with, so i was doing it close to two years sometimes like bro sometimes i i come back and um there's nothing there's I no money no money there's, there's nothing left but i, I kept on doing it because i saw a bigger picture in it i knew eventually i'll move to dubai or eventually i'll i'll quit my job because my, my contract was like two years right yeah and eventually i'll, I'll quit the job but i i just wanted to do it because for, for the love of it, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, it was in uh, 2019 where I said to myself, I can't be doing this, man. This up and down stuff. I need to get a car. 31st of December 2019. A lot of people, people who know me will know that on the 31st of December, I don't go out. I give excuses. The reason being is I'm a Christian. So, what we normally do is, it's not too much of a, a religious thing what i normally do is i sit by myself down assess how my year went pray about it and, and see how best i can improve in the next year bro bro so you're telling me 